Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Um, first off, I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreons who helped purchase the Lignose uh, Einhand this month and have been invaluable. Thank you very much. Second, I'd like to thank my friend who's a collector of firearms who loaned me this, the subject of today's video. The Slocum Sleeve Chamber Revolver, model of 1863. This is a gun that arose because of a very specific problem. And that problem was that Smith & Wesson had exclusive rights to the Rollin White patent. And what, what was that? Well, at the time, all revolvers were cap and ball revolvers at the time that Smith & Wesson obtained the patent. What Rollin White patented was the idea of this, a cylinder with the chambers bored all the way through so that it would accept a metallic cartridge and could thus be loaded, cleaned, etc., much more easily than the front-loading cylinders for cap and ball revolvers. Colt turned it down, which I'm sure they regretted bitterly, and um, Smith & Wesson picked it up. And so for the duration of the patent, Smith & Wesson was the only company in America that could make revolvers with bored-through cylinders to accept metallic, self-contained metallic cartridges. Now, other people tried different solutions, like the sewer conversion for Colt that loaded from the front of the cylinder, and um, there were several other attempts at solutions, and none of them worked particularly well. But Frank Slocum had a different idea. So, let me take it to the tabletop and show you what that idea was. Smith & Wesson was quite litigious about um, maintaining their patent rights, as a number of manufacturers attempting to get around it found to their woe. But Frank's idea was a little different, and we are going to unload to show clear, but that has to be done while I'm showing you this gun's party trick and Frank's idea. So, what you need to do to load or unload this revolver is set the hammer to half cock, very conventional, allows the cylinder to rotate freely, and then move this lever to the up position. Then, if you position a chamber in front of the fixed ejector, you can simply slide the chamber forward out of the cylinder. It's a separate piece, and it is, you know, full round, all around. You get great gas seal. And then you simply drop in a 32 rimfire long cartridge, close the sleeve, and rinse and repeat until you have loaded all the chambers. I'm showing that it is unloaded and unloading the chamber I just loaded. So, it's a five-shot revolver, sort of a pocket revolver. And, of course, when the cartridge has been fired, the ejector prevents the case, the empty case, from being moved forward, and you can just spill it out the side and insert another cartridge. Now, while this is certainly faster than a cap and ball revolver, it is still much slower than a Smith & Wesson. But on those, the barrel hinged up, you remove the cylinder and use the cylinder arbor to poke out the empties. And um, that was quicker to reload. This also is mechanically more complex, and that almost certainly means more expensive to produce. So there was very little incentive to spend extra to purchase one of these when you could get a perfectly good Smith & Wesson that was actually faster to reload. This did have an advantage. There is a problem with larger bore rimfire cartridges, and that is that it's just thin copper. The case head would occasionally expand and jam against the breech of the revolver. And that would jam your gun up and would have to be cleared before you could continue firing. The Slocum, the breech face, in effect, moves with the cylinder. So, if you have a case head expansion, no big deal. The gun just keeps right on working. And while that is Definitely an advantage. 
I'm not sure many people felt that it really offset the cost and the extra expense of producing a gun of this sort. It's a very nicely made gun. Uh, steel barrel and cylinder and chambers. Steel ejector. The uh, frame is gunmetal, which is a, a bronze alloy. Nice hardwood grips. And little engraving. Kind of a somewhat deluxe revolver. The trigger pull is a spur trigger, which can be tricky. But this one is very nice. It has a nice clean break. Very easy to use. So again, a nice revolver that would accept conventional metallic cartridges that were readily available. But Smith & Wesson's system was just better and almost certainly cheaper. So there's a bunch of these around. You can shoot them. And thank you again to my collector friend who allowed me to fire one of these cartridges and made by Union Metallic Cartridge Company. And uh, this ammo is basically an obtainium. So it was really nice of him to let me shoot one. God knows how old it is, but it fired just fine. No issues whatsoever. I, I don't know anything about the numbers of these guns produced. Um, except that I have a suspicion that they were at least modestly successful because you see examples popping up now and again. And if they were genuinely rare, um, you'd probably see that less often. And as I said, it's a nice little revolver. It's compact, handles well, would have gone very well in a pocket of the time. And, uh, yeah, it's just an answer to a question that only stayed a question till the end of the decade that it was produced in, at which point the patent expired and anybody could make conventional board through cylinder revolvers, and they did, in spades. And the Slocum Sleeve Chamber Revolver sank into obscurity as sort of a historical curiosity. And it is a clever solution. Unlike the other attempts at solutions, it's very easy to load and unload, it's very easy to use, very reliable, and it used readily available commercial ammunition. So, a lot of advantages, just not enough to make people buy it instead of a Smith & Wesson most of the time, I imagine. Anyway, if you liked the video, please click like and subscribe, and... Um, you want to support me in more material fashion, there is a link to my Patreon account below. Feel free to kick in a dollar a month. It all helps. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.